hello everyone welcome to my channel um thank you for joining us today again um we are reading from the book of luke chapter 19 today and i we're almost there amen in five more days we'll complete it and then we'll dance into the celebration of our lord and savior jesus christ glory be to god Amen. So quickly, I just have a few things that I want to share with us from the book of Luke, from verses 1 to 10, or book of, book of Luke chapter 19. From verses 1 to 10 is the story about Zacchaeus, the man that, um, the short man that came, uh, you know, that he was very eager to see Jesus. But I want to read quickly, you know, his, his resume. <laughs> he is... Um, CV. In the city of Jericho, there lived a very wealthy man named Zacchaeus. He was the supervisor over all the tax collectors. As Jesus made his way through the city, Zacchaeus was eager to see Jesus. He kept trying to get a look at him, but the crowd around Jesus was massive. Zacchaeus was a very short man and couldn't see over the heads of the people. So he ran on ahead of everyone and climbed up a blossoming fig tree. So he could get a glimpse of Jesus as he passed by. The, the thing that I wanted to see here is why was Zacchaeus, you know, so interested in Jesus Christ? The Bible said he was a wealthy man. He, he, he was the supervisor. So he was a boss at work. He had money. He had fame. He had status. He had prestige. He had everything going on for him. But the question is, why was he so eager to see Jesus? And he just you know, made me to realize that no matter how well to do we are, no matter how how high our status is, there's always a vacuum. And that vacuum can only be filled by Jesus Christ. So this man, I know he had heard about Jesus Christ. He had heard stories about him, but he really needed to see Christ. All the wealth that he had, all the, the, the prestige that he had, his status was not enough. He needed to see Jesus. Is there anyone watching me today and you are miserable? You, you know that there is really something missing in your life? Try my Jesus. Jesus will meet all your needs. Did you see how happy he was when Jesus told him that, that he was coming to his house. The Bible says in verse 8 that Zacchaeus joyously welcomed Jesus and was amazed over his gracious visit to his home. That also tells me about the compassion of Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus told them, you know, at the latter part of that passage that he always, he always comes to those that need him. And do you need Jesus today? He's not only to save you because Zacchaeus got saved in verse 9, but in verse 10, Jesus Christ said, the son of man has not come to seek. Uh, he, said, Jesus, he said, the son of man has come to seek out and give life to those who are lost. So even after you have given your life to Christ, there might still be some areas of your life that you are lost. Jesus has come. At this time, this is when we remember his coming. Begin to hand over those things to him. Begin to tell him, Jesus, I am lost in this area. I am lost in this area. Please, I need you to save me. I need you to save me from, you know, things that I'm doing that are not right. Am I an alcoholic? Um, do, I, do I go into pornography? Are there some things? Do I lie? Are there some things that I just want to give up that I am, you know, done with? And this is creating a lot of issues in my life. This is a time to ask Jesus. Tell him, Jesus, I need you. You have come to seek me out, to give life to me. I receive life from you. I receive light over all this situation. And the Lord, God Almighty, will minister to your need in the mighty name of Jesus. And the next thing uh, this passage talks about is the par parable of the prince and his servants the man that you know he was a well-to-do guy and he had servants he had to go back to headquarters to you know to to settle some issues and so he called his servants and gave them assignments he told them that you know you take this and work with this you take that and work with it and every one of them you know if you read it you will understand the story very well um 
it was just this particular one that took his his, uh, his master's uh, uh, treasure that was given to him and he went and buried it. He said he was going to wait until the master came back to give it back to him. And this is a very interesting story of how we have to be diligent. What you what you do with what has been given to you will determine what how much more will be given to you. What you do with what has been given to you will determine how much more will be given to you. So if you are finding that you are dry, that you are not being given more by God, that you are not having more opportunities, maybe you should go and revisit the opportunity that you had before. Maybe you should go and revisit what God had asked you to do. Or maybe you should go and revisit what God has told you. You know, the 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 assignment that he had given unto you before maybe you need to go back to that assignment if you are not faithful in one the lord will not give you more and you need to be diligent you need to explore ways to use what god has given unto you you need to occupy you cannot just be complacent. We cannot sit down and expect things to fall into our laps as we are going into this coming year. So we need to take stock. This is a time of stock taking, a time of retreat, a time of thinking or musing over the whole time that we have been, that we have been given. And, and you want to seek out and say, what have I done with God, with what God has given unto me? Because he's not going to give you any other assignment until you do the one that he has given unto you. Faithfulness is important. You must be faithful in little things so that you'll be given better opportunities. Maybe the reason that God, you know, that uh, big job has not opened unto you is because you have not been diligent in the, in the little one that he has given unto you. You know, you have been despising your days of little beginnings. So you want to make sure that you are doing it right. You want to make sure that you are, you, you know, you, you are faithful in the little so that a bigger one will be entrusted unto you. And the last part that I want to talk about is from uh, verse 30. Verse 30 says that when you, so this is when Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples and asking them to go and get a brand new coat for him because he needed something to ride to Jerusalem. And he told them, he said, you, when you get to so-and-so place, you go to that place, untie that coat and bring it to me. And if anybody asks you, tell them the Lord has need of it. And I, I, I just, you know, laugh because when Jesus was going to enter into Jerusalem, he rode on a brand new because the Bible said it was, it had never, that coat had never been written before. You know, if you look at it, he said, verse 30 says, when you enter the next village, you will find tethered there that means that it's uh tied a donkey's young coat that has never been ridden tear leather so those of you who have taken the oath of poverty again i'm telling you jesus or you those who said jesus was poor do you know that jesus sought out the best things in life he, he sought out you know the best animal to ride upon if we are talking about it right now is a tear leather brand new Bentley, hallelujah. That's what he was doing, a brand new plane. Some people were saying, God, Jesus was walking around the city of Samaria. He did not have a vehicle to walk around, to, to, drive, to drive around. Yeah, the donkey was there waiting for him and he needed to have a grand entrance into Jerusalem and whatever you need. So don't join them to take the oath or to, or to, to say, you know, you cannot put on good things. You cannot write good things. As long as you are faithful with God, as long as you are obedient to him, you can have it all because he owns it all. Hallelujah. So you, there's nothing wrong with you enjoying your life here on earth. You should enjoy. Jesus enjoyed his life here on earth. So you must enjoy your life as well. Anyway, that's by the way. The cult was new, but it was tied. That was one thing that caught my attention too. Brand new cult, but it was tied. 
He was tired. He had potentials. That coat had the purpose of that coat was to take Jesus to Jerusalem, but he was tied down. You see, when God wants to lay his hand upon you, he will let you loose. He will lose you from everything that has tied you down. So once you make yourself available for God to be used, God will lose you from every hindrance. He will lose you from every bondage. He will lose you so that you can be useful to him. So if there is anything in your life that is not allowed you to be useful. That is not supposed to be there. If there is sickness in your body that is not allowing you to be useful for God, you can't stand up straight because then you are not able to go and witness for God. You cannot, you know, your voice is crooked or you know, you, you, you have issues on your, around your, your voice box and you have a good voice. No, that's not supposed to be there. You know, so anytime God wants to use anyone, he said, he, he, he he loses them. So if anything is tying you down, I decree a loose in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be used wonderfully for God in the name of Jesus. May God lose you. May he lose anyone that is tied in the mighty name of Jesus. But remember that you are saved to serve. You cannot be loose from infirmity and sit down. The mother of Peter, when she was sick, when Jesus got to their house, she, he healed her. And she got up and began to serve. So anyone that is saved or anyone that is loose and they are still laying down, you are watching TV when you are supposed to be at church. You are laying down, you don't want to do anything that's not right. Do you know what is going to happen? The devil is going to come back because you would have an open uh, 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 open door for the devil. And he will want to come back and you know harm, me, harm you the more. So what you want to do is to get up. And begin to serve God. That's what that donkey did. And the other thing that happened to that donkey was when he got to Jerusalem, people started putting their clothes down, red carpet entry. Ha ha. Jesus does not use people and toss them. Even a donkey, when Jesus used, he wrote that that donkey wrote on red carpet. So when God uses you, he elevates you. I pray to God on your behalf today that you'll be elevated in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus Christ in verse 46 went into the temple and the Bible said he was so upset when he got to the temple because they were buying and selling. I, I indicate this. I, I, I kind of like translate it or not translate. I, I think about it as our body. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so many of us, you know, the devil has decided that he's going to buy and sell. Put this sickness in that body. Put that disease there. Make sure that that one doesn't have a child. Make sure that that one is barren. Uh, make sure that you have fibroid and you are running around with it. Some, it is cancer, hypertension, blood, sugar, and all that. That is the devil. Devil buying and sell it in the body. I decree over you by the anointing that is upon me for healing that every buying and selling of the devil in your body ceases from today. The Bible said that Jesus Christ went and overturned the tables of these people. I overturned the agenda of the devil over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke the devil over you. I declare according to the scriptures that your house is you're supposed to be a house of prayer. Your body is a is a is a body is a temple that to glorify God, where God speaks, where the glory of God comes out, when the spirit where the spirit of God dwells, and so shall it be. It will not be a cave of thieves in the name of Jesus. Nothing will steal your joy, nothing will steal your life, nothing will steal your peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Shalom. Join me tomorrow. I might have a surprise for you. Amen. Join me tomorrow. We will talk about chapter 20 again. God bless you. Amen.